Hey everybody, welcome back to another Let's Paint Live. We're so happy to have you. If you are new to our Let's Paint Live videos, then welcome. We're right here on the Plaid Crafts Facebook page every 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, the third Thursday of every month, where we teach you how to paint a painting in just about an hour. So tonight is a very special edi edition of our Let's Paint Live. We are painting with our brand new Folk Art Watercolor Gels, a really exciting new watercolor uh, paint in our Folk Art line. So that's what we're gonna be painting with tonight. And in honor of Mod Podge Month, happy Mod Podge Month, everybody, we've incorporated some Mod Podge techniques, some collage techniques into our painting tonight, which you can see. So I am really excited to uh, teach this one and to paint along with you all tonight. Before we get too into it, Stephen White is in the studio with us. So if you have any questions or comments or you just want to say hi throughout our live stream, then feel free to do that in the comment section. Stephen's going to be monitoring all of that and talking to you guys and um, relaying some of your comments over to me. Awesome. How's it going, Emma? Pretty good. How about you, Stephen? Doing well. I'm excited to use our new watercolor gels. This is Me a too. paint that we've been excited about for a long time. We've been talking about it recently. So if you guys watch our stuff on YouTube or uh, on Facebook, you've probably seen us talk about it before, but now we're actually going to get to do a full painting with it. Yeah, I know. Super exciting. So hopefully you guys um, will uh, fall in love with the paint like I have through our Let's Paint Live tonight. Cool. Let's get started. Okay, so let's run through our supply list. I'm going to tell you guys everything that you're going to want to have to paint along with us. So uh, the paints from our watercolor gel line that you're going to want to have are Cotton Candy, Pink Berry, Purple Iris, Peach Pop, Mermaid Tail, Sea Turtle, and um, Meyer Lemon. And one of those paintings is... Uh, Kind of like an Easter egg for our next next month's Let's Paint Live. So keep your eyes peeled. Yeah, if you have an idea, one of the um, watercolor gels names is a big hint for our next Let's Paint Live. So tell me what you think it is in the comments section. So you're going to want to have those folk art watercolor gels. You can find them at plaidonline.com. Um, you're going to want to have an 11 by 14 stretched canvas. Um, some Mod Podge mat, but honestly any original formula of Mod Podge will work, whether it be mat, satin, or gloss. Tonight we're going to be using mat. And um, so we left this downloadable pattern, which are just some kind of like newsprint type patterns um, that you can uh, download totally for free under this painting um, project listing. But if you don't want to do that, you can just, um, you know, I know some people don't like to tear apart book pages, but if you want to do that, feel free. Some newspaper would work. Um, anything that, you know, kind of gives off the same type of feeling would work really well. But I'm going to be using our downloadables tonight. Paula guessed that um, our word as a hint for the next stream is sea turtle. Ooh, maybe. Guess. Maybe. That is a good guess. I guess you'll have to stay tuned to find out. <laughs> okay, so we're going to, oh, also we're gonna be using our 10-piece Artist Variety brush set. I have some couple water basins. I have my trusty blow dryer here. I have all my watercolor gels already on my palette. And then I have um, either a fine tip or just like a regular black permanent marker. You're gonna to wanna to have that as well. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to begin to tear our paper into large strips or sheets. So like this is the size we're looking for. I'm probably going to tear them into sections of three. using uh, like printer paper with a pattern sort of on it already. Could you use actual newspaper? Yeah, of course. Um, so I'm using printer paper with the pattern on it, which you can find on platonline.com under this Let's Paint project. Like in the supply list, you'll be able to, um, there's a button that says download pattern, and that's exactly what this is that I'm using. So I have some parchment paper here um, just so I can apply my Mod Podge to the back of my paper. You can use parchment paper, wax paper, whatever you like to secure your workspace with before you start Mod Podging. 
Okay, so I'm gonna put some Mod Podge mat on my palette. And I'm just gonna take a three quarter inch flat brush and start to apply my Mod Podge to the back of my paper. So one good thing to know is um, we have found that you do want to apply the Mod Podge to the back of the paper so that you have the least amount of Mod Podge on the front of your paper that we're gonna be painting our watercolor gels on top of as possible because um, sometimes we have the opportunity of um, creating a resist with the Mod Podge. So we don't wanna seal our papers tonight. We just wanna use the Mod Podge as a glue, not as a sealer. That's good to know. Yeah. There's an idea here that somebody had on our YouTube stream. Uh, what about a mix of some old music paper and newspaper? I love that idea. I think that would be super cool. And they also asked if you could use baking paper. What paper? Baking paper. Yes, absolutely, that will work too. Okay, so, you know, if you've never Mod Podged before, we just want to make sure that our paper is really nice and securely onto our canvas. Um, just some Mod Podging tips. We're not trying to create too thick of a layer. We just want to make sure that it's evenly spread all across our paper so that the whole surface area is being adhered to the canvas. We don't want a bunch of excess Mod Podge that will kind of squirt out the sides. Not what we want. So I'm just like overlapping these papers so that we get a really fun Mod Podge-y, collage -y look. And if you kind of want to, you know, arrange it before you put it down, see how you like it, feel free to do that. Any other guesses for what our next month's Let's Paint Live is, Stephen? Yeah, somebody else on our um, YouTube stream uh, said, I'm hoping it's Mermaid Tail. Ooh, that's a good guess, too. If you're, if you're just now joining us, um, I told everybody that one of the uh, watercolor gel color names is actually a big hint for next month's Let's Paint Live. Um, some of the colors are um, Cotton Candy, Meyer Lemon, um, Sea Turtle, Mermaid Tail, Peach Pop. I think all of these could. I know, they like could all them. work. Lining it up. If you want to, you can go like around the sides of your canvas. And then you can see I'm just using my fingers just to make sure that it's nice and adhered. But you can use like a brayer or a squeegee, whatever Mod Podge tools you like to work with. But I'm just using my fingers. That'll be good enough since our paper is so thin. Emma, do you know who's teaching the next Let's Paint Live? I do. Our next Let's Paint Live teacher for next month is Jessie Jennings. I am so glad you said that because she just stopped by to say hello in the comments. <laughs> Ooh, don't tell anybody what the, <laughs> just kidding. You don't, can't. <laughs> don't spoil it, Jesse. Don't spoil their surprise. <laughs> Mary says her vote is for lemons. Lemons, that's a good one. And then Ken Kenny said uh, cotton candy clouds. Ooh. Cool. So, you know, we try to make our Let's Paint Lives fairly seasonable or seasonable, <laughs> seasonal, seasonal um, because we know that you guys like to paint, you know, with the seasons and, you know, if it, if when it's appropriate, we like to throw that in so that if we're painting in the summer, we're painting something really summery like an ocean, or if we're in the spring, we like to paint flowers. Um, so I don't know if that helps you guys at all. What month are we in? May, because it's Mod Podge month. May just started. May just started. 
It's also Star Wars Day. Oh, yeah. May the 4th. May the 4th be with you, Stephen. If you guys um, aren't following our social media channels, we posted a really cute project onto our Instagram, I believe, of a Star Wars inspired um, craft. So go check that out. It's with our um, our, Kicks paint. our Kicks Studio paint, yeah. which is um, really great for painting on shoes. So we painted a really cute um, BB-8 droid inspired shoes. Emma, do you want to catch up anybody who's just joining us? Yes. It seems like we got a couple folks. Absolutely. So welcome if you're just now joining us. We are painting Bring May Flowers. I really should have known what month it is, huh, Stephen? Since it's the title of our painting. Um, we're painting Bring May Flowers, and we are using our brand new Folk Art Watercolor Gels, a really beautiful, exciting new watercolor type paint. Um, so we're going to have some really cool, painterly, kind of loose, very artistic style of painting tonight that I hope you all will enjoy. And right now we are just Mod Podging um, some craft paper onto a canvas. Yes. I'm using um, Mod Podge Matte, but you can use um, whichever original formula of Mod Podge is your favorite. It honestly won't matter a whole lot because we're not sealing this. We are only using the Mod Podge to adhere the paper down. We're not sealing with Mod Podge. Okay, we're so close, but this is kind of fun, the collage part of this, huh? That's funny. You know, um, our friend Ken King from uh -huh. Australia, she said it's autumn over there. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe not appropriate for where you live. <laughs> I guess I'm really just thinking of our friends in the U.S., huh? I will give you another hint. It's not an autumnal pa style painting. Okay, yeah. It's no, a little bit more summer no, inspired. Uh, no fall leaves. No fall leaves. Womp womp. Seems like a lot of our guesses are for the sea turtle or for lemon. Mm. Good guesses. We're very close. Seems like this step uh, should be pretty, um, pretty easy and pretty fun because there's really no wrong way to do it. Exactly, Stephen. There's n really no way that you can mess this up. It's just, you know, an opportunity to be creative um, and just kind of listen to what the artist inside of you is saying. Place it down wherever you think looks best. There's, you cannot mess this up. I guess we say that with most of our Let's Paint lives though, huh? We well, really try to. Yeah, I was gonna say that's what we try to do. Yeah, we try to base all of our Let's Paint Live paintings um, in a way that anybody can paint along with us, and they will have fun, and they will leave our class um, feeling happy with their painting. So.
And if you are new, we have a really great um, Facebook group for all of our um, Let's Paint Live fans. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, Stephen? Uh, yeah, so we have um, our Facebook group, Let's Paint with Plaid, um, that some of you guys I know are frequenters of. There's, uh, that's where you'll find Chris and Andy, uh, who do our Lunch and Learn series um, every Tuesday and Thursday. And they teach a lot of decorative painting techniques. Yeah. And that is uh, really, really fun. And, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I see a couple people in the comments who I know are some of our regular viewers there. So it's good to see you guys. Okay, cool. So, you know, feel free to follow that Facebook page. A lot of people post their paintings and what they're working on. Um, and the people in that page are so supportive, which I know a lot of you know. So it's a really cool group. Yeah, it's called Let's Paint with Plaid. Yeah, right there on Facebook. Okay, so we are done collaging. So it's time for the painting part. So the first thing that I am going to do is I already have some of my um, paints on my palette here. So I'm going to take my three quarter inch flat brush and I am going to take some, so that's my Mod Podge water. So I have a little basin for my Mod Podge water that I'm not really going to mess with anymore. And then I just have some clean water straight from my sink. And I am going to, um, so I'm going to dip my three quarter inch flat brush into my clean tap water and I'm going to take my really wet brush and I am going to dip it into my mermaid tail, which is this really pretty um, kind of rich aqua color. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to introduce um, this water into this paint because the way that our watercolor gels works is the more um, water that you introduce to the paint, it, you're going to get um, a lesser opacity of the pigment similar to watercolors. So that's what we're going for at first. So I just put just a little bit of water and with that I'm going to sketch out our vase. So um, taking my three quarter inch flat brush, I'm going to do a little dab there and a little dab there, kind of at a corner. So I'm going to, in the middle of those two lines, like this, we're going to connect those. Okay. And now I'm going to go up, make a line, go up, make a line. And it's not perfect. We're just kind of sketching here. And now we're going to do the same kind of deal. I put a dot in the middle here and now I'm going to come down from e either side like that. This reminds me of those like cube uh, yeah. drawings <laughs> that I would do on my desk. In middle school? Yeah. Um, so Brenda was asking where did you get that paper? Like your crafting paper? Yeah, so this is um, a downloadable pattern that you can find on platonline.com or if you have some scrapbook paper that is a similar appearance to this, or if you want to use book pages, somebody had a great idea to do sheet music, that would be super cool. Anything that you have, but we have one for free for you to use on platonline.com. Okay, so I'm gonna take more water and dip it into my watercolor gels. And so now I'm trying to incorporate quite a bit of water because I really want my next moves to be pretty transparent. And so with that, I am going to just kind of base coat our vase here. So you can see how the, uh, the paper is still showing through the paint. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. And if you buy our watercolor gels and you um, put them out on your paper or your palette, you might notice that some of them look kind of chunky and have a, like a cottage cheese type texture and there's nothing wrong with your paint. That is uh, how it comes out of the bottle, and when you add water to it is, is when you get that. that yeah, sort of that motion. really beautiful um, gliding yeah. motion. Okay, so you can see it's pretty transparent here. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush. And I'm gonna take a smaller flat brush, and I'm gonna kinda take from um, the part of the paint that I haven't added as much water to because we're going to get a more opaque look 
and I am going to um, paint some lines on the edges of our vase and in the middle here. So that connection. You're just, you're just using like the paint with no water mixed in right now. Right? Exactly, and that's why it, it looks so transparent. No, no or little to no water. Okay, and now um, let's actually make our lines a little bit thicker first. Okay, and now I'm gonna take just, I'm gonna dip my brush in the water. I'm not reloading with any paint and I'm going to kind of drag that um, paint that we just painted on there from all sides. I'm gonna drag that to the center of our vase. And what I'm essentially doing is kind of just taking the water, no paint, and I'm blending it out. So we get a lot of cool dimension in our painting or in our vase really. Like that. Okay. Rinse my brush again. Now I'm going to go back to my three quarter inch flat brush and I'm going to go ahead and paint the um, base of our um, canvas here. So I'm going to take my um, brush again, dip it in the water, and go into my um, purple color here, my Pacific Iris. And from the edges of my vase, I'm going to paint our foreground and just kind of go around our vase here. Allison asked, are you recording this because I missed the vase? Uh, yeah, so all of our live streams can be played back uh, as soon as they're finished. And you can uh, find them on the Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. And uh, you can skip or skip to any parts that you missed. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and that's with all of our lives too. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so if you're kind of getting... Um, You'll come to know throughout our um, class today that one of the techniques that I like to use with our watercolor gels is that I like to create um, some stronger lines with um, a really with without a watered down version of our paint first, and then I like to just take some of the water without rinsing my brush and kind of blend what I painted right before. Um, into other parts of my painting without adding any more gels to my paintbrush. We're just taking what's little left of the paint on our brush and we're taking some of the paint that we really um, recently applied to our canvas and we're just brushing that down with the water. If you need to you know, apply a little bit more paint to your brush, feel free to do that and then blend it down. Um, Angie, we used Mod Podge to put the collage paper down. Yes, we used Mod Podge matte, but you can use um, whatever original formula of Mod Podge you want. Okay, like that. So I'm going to rinse my brush again. And now for the really fun part, we're going to start um, painting the base of our flowers, which is kind of really abstract and just very loose. So again, you cannot do this wrong. So I'm going to go in my water, my little flat brush, and I'm going to start incorporating some of that water into my pink berry. And we're going to paint um, kind of like a circle at first. So once we have the base of our circle, I'm going to kind of paint like little squigglies, like a squiggly line um, rim of our circle. So that we just kind of have like an irregular looking blob almost. A 
like so, okay? And you can, you know, you see the um, flower patterns that we have going on in our painting to the left of me. So if you wanna feel free and start painting some of those, I'm just gonna kind of walk you through each shape that I incorporated into my flower bouquet. And then you can take those techniques and kind of arrange your very own bouquet, which is a lot of fun. Okay, so now at the top here, I'm going to make some loops. One loop, two loop, three loop, for loop and then fill those in right there I'm going to paint some little circles here okay I'm gonna rinse my brush and start working with my other colors so I'm going to go back into my purple iris with my watery brush going to paint another kind of circle and then we're going to create that irregular rim Rinse my brush. And now I'm gonna go in with my Meyer lemon with that really watery brush and introduce some water into our Meyer lemon. And I'm gonna do the same thing that we did with this little pink flower up top here. I'm gonna create one loop, two loop, but I'm gonna make them a little bit bigger. And paint those little loops. Okay, and I'm actually going to use my um, Meyer Lemon 2 to paint the top of our flower here. What's that part of the flower called, Stephen? The top? Like the, the, like the part pollen? that the pollinators like. Is it the stamen? I, th I think that sounds right. Let us know. Yeah, people who are more where, the, where all the pollen us. lives yeah. in the flower. Where does the pollen live in the flower? <laughs> if you... Um, are anywhere near uh, where Plaid is based in um, Atlanta, then you don't even have to ask where the pollen is. It's everywhere, at least for me. Okay, so I'm gonna go into my, um, you know what? I'm gonna introduce some um, water to my cotton candy. Yes, stamen is correct. Cool. Thank you for the feedback. I'm gonna go into my cotton candy. I painted some little circles there, as you can see. And now I'm gonna paint um, the center of our flower. So just one circle, like that, okay? Rinse my brush, because I'm getting into a new color, and now I'm gonna introduce some water into my peach pop. And I'm gonna just kind of paint some um, loops, but um, the, you know this shape can look a little bit more circular. So I am painting loops, but if it ends up looking more like a circle, that's okay too. Like so. All right, so the last thing to do of painting is to go into our sea turtle. And we're gonna use this sea turtle color to paint in some of our leaves. So again, I'm introducing some water into the watercolor gels. And we're gonna just paint some leaf shapes. So that's gonna be one stroke that way and then a mirrored stroke going the other direction. So one leaf, 
and really have fun with these leaves, making them bigger and smaller. You know, the more irregular, I think, the more natural and the better looking, so. We're just painting some leaves coming out of our bouquet. How do you say that word, Stephen? Bouquet? Mm -hmm. That's how I say it. Okay, I know some people say it differently. Bouquet. Yeah, bouquet. All right, so I'm liking how that's looking, you guys. So we're gonna stop the painting for, the, for now. Um, if you wanna keep going and keep adding more flowers, feel free to do that. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rinse my brush. And I'm gonna take my blow dryer and I'm gonna blow dry my paint. So that's nice and dry. One second, I got you. Also, um, Ken Kenny says she loves the sea turtle color. Oh, good. Yeah, I like it too. It's a really pretty springy green. And Jody said that she has never heard of this kind of paint before. Cool, yeah. So while Steven's helping us out, um, this is our brand new folk art watercolor gels. We've done a couple live streams on Facebook and YouTube um, explaining the paint line. Let's see if this works. Hmm. Technical difficulties so with our hair. Try one more time. Oh, okay, perfect. But back to what I was saying. Um, so this is a brand new paint line in our folk art line. We've done a few live streams on Facebook and YouTube explaining the whole line, um, all of uh, the benefits of the paint. It works really well on a variety of different porous surfaces like raw wood, canvas, as you can see, paper, as you can see, like watercolor paper, fabric, um, all of those types of porous substrates. Um, it's a really fun way to tint and personalize black and white photos to kind of um, customize them and personalize them make a really um, beautiful thoughtful personalized gift like as you can see it's great for mixed media and collages which might be my favorite use for them but um, yeah all around it creates a really beautiful watercolor effect and I am loving them so back to where we were going with this I'm gonna go ahead and blow dry my painting <laughs> I forgot to do something while I was looking at my painting. We forgot to paint the stamen. We are so interested in the stamens of our Meyer yeah, lemon we flower. so much about it. We didn't do anything. I know. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do that real quick, and then I'm going to get back to blow drying. Just okay. like that. And before you get back to blow drying, I'm going to run a couple questions by you. Okay. Angie asked uh, what brush you were using. So I was using just a small flat brush, but you can use um, whatever you like to paint lines with. I like to use a small flat brush, but you can use a liner brush, a round brush, whatever you have. Andrea asked, can you hold up the bottle again? Of watercolor gels? Yeah. Of course. So this is what you can find in your local craft store. Um, they're also available on plaidonline.com. Cool. And I'm trying to, somebody else asked about the... Um, printable paper and like where exactly on our website you can find it. Okay. So I'm doing some hunting right now and I'll tell you exactly what to type in when I find Thank it. Thank you, Stephen. If you go to platonline.com and you type in, um, in the search, in the search bar, if you type in bring May flowers, this should come right up. Okay. Yeah. And that, that bring May flowers is also in the description of the video. So like whether you're awesome. watching on YouTube or on Facebook, click on that link and you'll find the downloadable. Yeah. Uh, the link that says that's where the pattern is. Uh, you should be able to uh, find those. Emma, where can people find watercolor gels? Um, they can find them on plaidonline.com. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna keep blow drying. Okay, now for the fun part. 
I'm going to take my permanent marker. You can use a, uh, my black permanent marker. You can use a fine tip marker. I'm going to be using just a traditional one. And we're going to start some doodling. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to outline very roughly the sides of my vase here. Um, and I think personally, in my opinion, that the, um, the kind of more scribbly and the less straight lines, um, the more doodly you get in this, the better it looks. You guys can kind of see that um, it's just very loose and it, I feel like it makes it look more artsy. I kind of go over some of my lines multiple times. And I think it just adds to the cool collage -y look. Okay, so I'm going to create a few lines, not continuous lines, to kind of represent the center of our vase here. Do the same, just kind of scribbly lines and some kind of scribbly lines at the corners here. Making it look just really loose and artsy. Okay, I'm gonna make some leaf shapes like this. We have several questions about can you use a paint, a paint pen? Absolutely, you can use a paint pen. And um, we actually, speaking of paint pens, also released, we've been releasing a lot of really cool products lately. Um, you can find on platonline.com some Apple Barrel multi-surface paint pens. Um, it comes in a variety pack and um, that would work really well for this too. The exciting thing about those Apple Barrel multi-surface paint pens, as I doodle, they are multi-surface um, and water-based, which is really cool to find in a multi-surface paint pen that they're water-based, so no smelly fumes or anything like that. If you guys can see, too, I'm just um, tracing all of these shapes right here. Are we gonna say something, Stephen? Um, yeah, so there's been a lot of uh, comments that I'm catching up on on both YouTube and Facebook. Um, we had a comment that said, uh, I love this for this part. Could we use a small craft heat gun or does it have to be a blow dryer? No, you can definitely use uh, the heat gun that yeah, you have. Yeah, absolutely. If, it's like a, like, you, if you guys watch Andy Jones on our Let's Paint channel, if it's one of those crazy strong heat guns, <laughs> I would say just hold it further back. Yeah, absolutely. Um, still catching up here. I think Mary on our Facebook stream has linked the actual PDF to the craft paper. So oh, great. She's made it super easy for you. Thank you, Mary. Um, cool. Cool. Okay. So you guys, for this flower, um, the loopy flower, I'm just creating little loop-de-loop -loop shapes here like that. And then I'm outlining the stamen and then making some scratchy doodles. For this, I'm doing like a really loose flower shape and it's looking very doodly like that. Very, very loose flower shape. I'm just trying to kind of get the petals, but a kind of a little squiggly circle. And then I'm going to um, make some X's in the center of the circle to create the center. Do the same thing here. Very loose little doodly circles in our very round circles that we painted earlier. X marks the spot. Emma, if you were going to air dry it, how long would you leave it for? That is a great question. I would probably leave it for about um, 30 minutes. Okay. Maybe 30 to an hour. Just to be safe. Yeah. A loose circle in there. Um, and I'm just drawing some petals following the shape that we painted. And now I'm going to kind of going in, making some smaller petals, adding to the artsy doodly effect. And I'm just making um, my best effort to take up as much of that space in the paint as I can. Okay, this is kind of like a hydrangea inspired. <laughs> so we're starting from the outside, creating little doodles in 
our um, petals in our swiggly circle. Hold it up so you guys can see it really well. And I'm just continuing towards the center with those little doodles. If there's a comment about you turning the canvas upside down, it's just it's just so yeah. that you can see it easier. Exactly. I always say, if you have to move the canvas around a little bit, work um, smarter, not harder. Yeah. Um, Jody asked, can you seal with a top coat? And if you could, what would you use? That's a great question. So I, you could definitely seal it with a top coat. There's no, there's really no need to, um, but I would seal it after you're done painting and doodling on it using your permanent marker. Um, definitely do not seal before you apply your watercolor gels. But I would seal with Mod Podge, just some Mod Podge matte, satin, or gloss, whatever finish you prefer. That would be the best sealer, in my opinion, for a project like this. Yeah, it's almost like you're, you, you know, you're using watercolors too. Mm -hmm. So if you're going for a watercolor kind of look, you want to think about, well, if I'm going to use gloss, is that going to take away mm -hmm. from the watercolor? So it's a great point. It's something to think about. Um, like Emma said, you definitely don't need to seal it. Um, Tina brought up a good point that World Collage Day is May 13th. No up. way. Very we, we, we coincidental were, yeah. with Mod Podge Month. <laughs> we, uh, we, we jumped the gun on it. I know. That's awesome to know. Yeah. Okay, guys. So without further ado, that is Bring May Flowers. Um, so the last thing to do is to sign our painting. So there you go. Don't forget to check out um, our Facebook group on Facebook. Let's Paint with Plaid. We have a really great community of very supportive artists at all different um, ranges of artistic um, uh, experience and education. Um, we have a lot of great lessons on there. Um, don't forget to join us for our next Let's Paint Live um, the third Thursday of every month at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time and join us the, um, every Monday at the same time for another uh, Monday paint night. We do a lot of really great educational free uh, classes and tutorials, so make sure to follow Plaid Crafts if you're not already for some really um, great uh, content. Yeah, um, so check out watercolor gels. Mm -hmm. um, they can be found on plaidonline.com or at a Hobby Lobby if you have one of those near you. Um, they're really good for indoor, outdoor, uh, decorative painting like we did today, good for layering and blending. Uh, for porous surfaces, you can see Emma has a lot of projects behind her um, that we have used our watercolor gels on. And there's a sale on Plaid Online until the 6th, which is this Saturday. Awesome. Um, so go ahead and take advantage of that. Cool. Thanks, Stephen. So um, one more thing before we leave. Um, so drum roll, please. If you guessed sea turtle, you were correct. So our next um, Thursday paint night is going to be a really cute sea turtle. It's called Just Keep Swimming. So look that up on platonline.com and look out for it on our social channels. Um, next month we'll be painting a very adorable sea turtle. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for following along with us tonight. It's been a pleasure painting with you and we will see you next time. Bye guys.